It was here in the streets of Kandahar that the Taliban were born from the crucible of war. When Soviet troops withdrew from Afghanistan in defeat in 1989, civil war erupted. Warlords and opium dealers carved out fiefdoms. The country was on the brink of starvation. In Kandahar, a poor wheat farmer named Mullah Mohammed Omar offered a radical solution. Stability, he said, would come through strict Islamic justice and zero tolerance for drug trafficking and corruption. Mullah Omar attracted many young followers, especially Afghans who'd studied in Pakistani madrasas. They called themselves the Taliban, literally meaning religious students. The Taliban are Deobandi Muslims, a hardline evangelical sect of Sunni Islam. Many Deobandis believe it is their duty to rid the world of tyranny through jihad. And they were about to receive outside help. It came from Afghanistan's neighbor, Pakistan, eager to pursue its own interests. Pakistan's objective in Afghanistan has always been strategic. Pakistan wants a proxy in Afghanistan to strengthen its western flank in case of renewed war with Islamabad's bitter and larger enemy, India. The Pakistani intelligence agency, the ISI, also found the zealous Taliban willing to allow Pakistan to train Islamic militants to fight India in the contested lands of Kashmir. Backed by the ISI, the Taliban captured Kabul in 1996 and imposed shocking draconian laws. Music and even kites were outlawed. Women were denied education and forced to wear burqas. They were stoned for adultery. It wasn't long before the rogue Saudi billionaire Osama bin Laden came looking for a base to attack the United States. Mullah Omar welcomed bin Laden as a brother. From Afghanistan, bin Laden plotted the attacks of 9-11. But the Taliban may have misjudged the American response. The Taliban's army of some 30,000 fighters was quickly defeated. The survivors, including bin Laden, took refuge in the one place they knew they'd be safe the mountains of Pakistan across the border. From Pakistan, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda continued to fight. According to U.S. military estimates, the Taliban are now at roughly the same strength as before 9-11, with 28,000 fighters in Afghanistan, 13,000 in the south, 11 in the east, two in the north, and two more in the west. But there are signs the Taliban may be willing to make a deal. Wakil Ahmed Mutawakil was the Taliban's foreign minister. As a spokesman for Mullah Omar, he met bin Laden. Now in Kabul, says the Taliban would be willing to break ties with al-Qaeda in exchange for power and peace. In the past, the Taliban were like the owners of the house, and al-Qaeda were guests here, he says. Now al-Qaeda are war partners. The Afghan government has foreign war partners. If peace exists, both sides won't need their foreign allies. The U.S.-backed Afghan President Hamid Karzai has made it clear he wants a deal with the Taliban. In a meeting this summer, he called on the militants to join a peace process. But those negotiations have been disorganized. Turkey, Libya, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Pakistan, the Maldives, Malaysia and Indonesia have all offered to broker talks. Mutawakil says the peace process needs to be streamlined and the Taliban need an office to organize negotiations. The Taliban should be removed from international blacklists, he says. Some prisoners should be released and the Taliban should be allowed to safely establish a political office in Afghanistan or in another country. Surprisingly, several senior U.S. military commanders agree. But would the Taliban really make peace with President Karzai? I'm very skeptical that it's going to go very far because I don't think the Taliban is interested in a political process. I think the Taliban has one intention for President Karzai, and that involves a lamppost and a piece of rope. In the mountains of eastern Afghanistan, a Taliban stronghold near the Pakistani border, we met Malavi Nasir, a 45-year-old Taliban field commander. He claims to be in charge of 300 fighters. I took up arms, he says, because the Americans terrorized our country. They are killing innocent people and bombing our villages. We are fighting to defend our religion. I won't stop fighting until foreign forces leave. While the rank and file of the Taliban's foot soldiers say they want to keep on fighting. 
Senior U.S. military officials tell NBC News the Taliban's most senior leaders who are still in Pakistan are getting older and want to come home. They'd make a deal, U.S. officials believe, in exchange for amnesty and positions in the government. But many Afghans object to an accommodation with the Taliban. They don't want to return to harsh Islamic laws and suspect the United States is simply looking for an excuse to broker a deal and then exit this long, costly war. We Afghans won't have a, a political settlement, but we are not willing to abandon what we achieved uh, in the past nine years, for example, in terms of democracy, human rights, women rights, free media and free speech. And I think President Karzai is not reaching out to the Taliban in Pakistan. He's, he's surrendering himself to them. Richard Engel, NBC News, Kabul. It's amazing to have that from Richard uh, for our show. I'm very grateful.